Hello YouTube, it's Gopernupper, and today we're talking about my next camera haul. So there's a lot of stuff out here because I haven't done an installment in quite some time, and it went dry around here for quite some time, and then all of a sudden there was an explosion of stuff. A lot of the dealers started, you know, updating their stock, and a lot of new stuff came in at pretty good prices. So I'll show you what I found. First up, if you guys have been following me, you've already seen videos on this. This is my Kodak Retina Automatic 3 camera. And this one cost me about $25 at an antique mall. Uh, it's a 35mm rangefinder camera in great condition. It's working just fine. And uh, a very nice Kodak camera in great shape at a great price. I love this thing and um, I'm very happy to add it to my Retina collection. I'm going to try to zip through these so I don't make another half hour long video. At the same antique mall, on the very same day, I found this. A Kodak Brownie Fiesta with the flash holder. The only real problem with this thing is there's a small chip in the Bakelite right here. But with the price I paid, I can't really complain. It's three bucks. So next, um, this was after the dry stuff came to an end. This was the stuff I got during the dry time. And right about now is when the explosion of stuff happened. So, this is a Kodak Ektra camera. And I believe this is a 1. Not totally sure. Works great. Uh, this was given to me by my grandmother's neighbor. And it came with two of these really neat flip flashes. So this mounts in there like that. And you get ten flashes. You take five, flip it over, remount it. Very cool. Obviously that was free. So next I found this at my local Goodwill. This is a Polaroid Pronto in black. This one's working just fine. I don't have film out here to test it now. It was $2.99. And this thing's in really great shape, too. I'm surprised I found this because it was on a Saturday and there were a bunch of electronics pickers there. So next, there is a small resale shop not far from my place that is going out of business. And um, they're closing soon. So I went there and sort of lowballed them on some camera gear. I'm going to go back there and offer them 5 bucks on whatever stuff they have the day before they close. But I got these two lenses for 20 bucks. This one is a Vivitar Auto Zoom. Right here it says 85 to 205 millimeters, and it's f3.8. It's an M42 screw mount, and it works just fine. Nice and smooth. But yeah, uh, 10 bucks per lens is not bad at all. Next, this is a Nikon mount, and this one's not really specified. It is a multi-coated zoom um, number blah 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 lens, but if you look it's actually a Sears, also in great working condition, 10 bucks, it's 28 to 200 millimeters, so great range of zoom on that too. So next, this is a, um, it's a Gemini Auto 2x Teleconverter, and this uses the Pentax K mount. I paid two dollars for this at my antique mall. Now when I got it, I'm assuming the seller thought it was broken because the f-stops weren't working properly. This tab was bent forward very badly. And uh, once I got it home, it was a simple matter to take out some pliers and now it's working great. So two bucks is pretty good. Uh, another addition to my lenses and it'll be great for my Pentax K setup. Say Weston Master 2 Universal Exposure Meter. Finally got one. It's working great. It's just way too dark in here. This was five bucks. Um, came with case. I don't have the case out here, but uh, very cool. In great working shape. So next, this was an Easter present. It's the Kodak Retinet 1A. Also in great working condition. Um, this one's very clean. 
like I said, works just fine. Very cool camera, uh, awesome addition to my retina collection. So next I found this on an antiquing trip along with some other stuff, and uh, this one is part of my camera rescue program. I saved this one. It was a dollar. This is a Gaff Anscomatic 126, and this actually surprisingly goes with it, sort of, which I'll explain in just a moment. Now, if I want to show you how it works, I have to open the back, but it works great. Uh, for a dollar, it's a steal for such a neat little camera. I'm glad I was able to save it. So next, this was another Easter present. This is a Kodak Flash Bantam. Um, I forgot to mention, the Retinet 1A was $20, or 15 excuse me. Uh, this, this thing is also in great working shape. And it's in really good cosmetic condition too. Uh, 18 bucks is pretty good. It uses 828 film. Neat little camera. Really small, too. This thing I bought with the Retinet 1A, or at least uh, was purchased, I was told. Konica EE Matic Rangefinder was $5. This thing is also in very good shape. But neat camera for 5 bucks. I'm glad I managed to uh, pick that up. So next, I purchased this separately for $12. This is a Pentax ME Super. And it uh, did not come with a lens, and it came as a four parts or repair camera. I'm very happy to say that I did repair it. This thing came with the stuck mirror latch lever issue, as shown in one of the videos by Fix Old Cameras. He's an excellent YouTube channel. And um, this is an interesting mode dial and push button for shutter speed selection. And this thing's electronically controlled shutter can stay open for up to four seconds on command. And no, that is not actually a malfunction. It is supposed to do that. There are no gears because it is electronically controlled. But yeah, it goes up to one two thousandth of a second, I believe. Or is it one four thousandth? Let me take a look quick. Nope, two thousandth. Uh, Pentax came out camera, sold four parts of repair, and I did repair it. Very cool. So next, I found this as sort of an uh, extra. Another, another participant in my camera rescue program. This is a Kodak Teledisc. It's five dollars. And this thing has a telephoto lens. As you can see it rotates, which is very cool. And this example works just fine. Oops. Jeez. It'll survive. So next, this goes with my GAF Anscomatic 126 because it is also a GAF Anscomatic developing tank. Um, Five dollars from one of my favorite camera booths, and this came in pretty good condition with the spool. So I'm all set, still accumulating stuff for the darkroom, I just need a few more components in place and then I'll be all set. So this was another participant in my camera rescue program, five dollars. Kodak Instamatic 700 camera. And this thing is in really great shape. It works just fine. Um, the metering cell is great too. I don't have any batteries in here because I don't know what kind of battery it takes. But the interesting thing about this is that it has a shutter speed selection, so I'll just show you real quick that it's working. Works great. So a neat little camera. Glad I was able to save it, and that was five dollars. So now we move on to my most favorite purchase that I made myself. I don't have a lens on it, but I do have this one, which I purchased separately. This is a Nikormat FTN black finished model. And the really sweet thing about this camera is not only that it's a Nikormat FTN, but the price I paid for it. See that? 30? Nope, 20. It's 20 bucks 
for the camera. Body only, in perfect operating condition, condition and great cosmetic condition. Look at this. There's only a little bit of brassing on some of the corners, which is fantastic. This thing is in great shape. It works just fine, and uh, it's all there. So all in all, a great purchase for 20 bucks. So everything over here is the subject of a Craigslist purchase for $20 total. So first I'll start with this. This is a Lay Click Tough 35. And uh, this thing is working just fine. I don't have batteries in here at the moment, so you have to manually charge the shutter. Uh, this is an all-weather camera, but I also believe that it's waterproof. I'm not entirely sure. I will have to do some research on this. But it works fine, and as part of a Craigslist lot that cheap, it's an awesome purchase. So this was with it. This is a Spartus Full View it's a 120 film, uh, pseudo TLR, very famous. Doesn't have the uh, classic styling to it like the other ones do, but it's a working example in really great shape. So I have to explain this one a little bit. This was sort of an extra because it wasn't included in the listing, but he still threw it in without changing the price of $20. It's a Yashica FX3 Super SLR camera in really good condition and this thing came with not only a haze filter would be but a Yashica lens it is a zoom and this thing runs I gotta take this haze filter off because I can't see anything 42 to 75 millimeters with an f3.5 to 4.5 f-stop range and the camera and lens combo are in great condition the camera works just fine um, obviously it suffers from the leatherette issue of a lot of these cameras, but that's not really a problem for me. And this one is my favorite of the Craigslist lot, closely contending for a spot with the Nikkor mat. This is a Konica Auto Reflex A, and this is the A2 variant. Essentially it's a slightly downgraded um, T2, however this one is slightly rarer and it has more value to me as a collector. Did not come with the kit lens, it came with a Konica Hexanon AR 28mm 3.5, which, while it would be nice to have the kit lens, I already have one, so I can use both of these lenses now. It's great to have um, some more lenses for the kit. Came with the lens cap. It's all in great shape, and this thing is cosmetically the best out of all the cameras, too. Um, this one's definitely my favorite of the Craigslist lot. But yeah, really neat camera, great shape. Uh, slightly more valuable because of its rarity. Super cool. Oh, uh, one more thing I almost forgot to mention. This is a Targus tripod. I purchased it with the box and carrying case for $4.99 at a Goodwill. So yeah, that's it for this camera haul. Thank you guys for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.